Next question is, how many ways can you pick three pizza toppings from 20 toppings? Now we are choosing things from a pool of options, so that suggests combinations or permutations. The question is, does order matter? The answer is no, order doesn't matter for pizza. If you choose sausage, pepperoni, and bacon, that's the same pizza as if you choose bacon, sausage, and pepperoni. So because order doesn't matter, we are going to use a combination. We have 20 toppings total that we can choose from, and we are going to choose three. I'm gonna move this over to make a little bit of space for our calculator. And the way that we type this into my old school calculator is we put the 20 in here first. We go to math, we arrow over to the probability section, and we go to the combination option, which is the third option. This is now 20 C, three and hit enter and that is going to give us the number of pizza combinations that's 1140 possible pizzas you can make the next question a student must pick four books out of 18 to read in a specific order now this specific order thing tells us that order does matter that means that we're going to use a permutation so our permutation has a pool of 18 things to choose from and we are choosing four books to type that into my old school calculator I'm gonna put 18 in first and then I'm gonna to go to math and I'm gonna arrow over to our probability and I'm going to select our permutation option and then four. That gives us 73,440 permutation. Let's take a look at what problem is next. We have a bucket of balls. There are 10 red, 14 blue, 13 green, and five orange balls. We're gonna choose three balls with replacement. That means after we make our selection, we put the ball back in the bucket. What is the probability that we pick a red, then a blue, then a red. So the question is, what is the probability that we first choose a red ball? Well, there were 10 red balls in the bucket, and we probably should have summed all of these up. There were 42, it looks like, balls in the bucket. So the probability of first choosing a red ball is 10 out of 42. The probability of then choosing a blue ball is going to be 14 out of 42. Again, we put that ball back in the bucket, and we need a probability of finding a red ball again, which again is 10 out of 42. To get the numerator of the answer, we can just multiply 10 times 14 times 10. That gives us 1400 on top. And for the denominator, we just need to multiply 42 times 42 times 42, which could also be written as 42 cubed. And our calculator has given us 74,088. We could find ourselves a decimal for that probability, and that decimal would be 0 0.0189. Maybe I'll just round that to 0 0.019. Okay, the next problem is done without replacement. That means when we draw, that means when we take a ball out of this bucket we don't put it back in so we're going to ask the question what is the probability that we pick a green ball and then after having done that we pick an orange ball so green first we have 13 green balls out of 42 total now that we've taken that green ball out of the bucket we have five orange balls left but only 41 left in the bucket total if we want to multiply that out we can do the numerator first 13 times 5 is 65 and 42 times 41 is 1722 again if we want a decimal here the calculator is giving us 0.038 as our answer. And again, that corresponds to about a 3.8% chance. Let's keep going with the next problem. Well, this is a fun one. How many different arrangements of the letters in the word number can be made? Notice that there are one, two, three, four, five, six different letters here. They're all different, and we can arrange them in any number of ways. Get it? We have six slots here. We have six options for our choice of our first letter. It could be an N, a U, an M, a B, an E, or an R. But once we've made that selection, we only have five letters left for our choice for our second letter. Once we've selected those two letters, we only have four left and so on. Note that that can be written as six permutation and typing that into my calculator, I'm getting 720 as my answer. Next question, how many ways can five sopranos and four altos be selected from seven sopranos and nine altos? So we have five sopranos, we're selecting from seven sopranos. How many ways can we do that? Again, we have to make the note that order doesn't matter here. We're just selecting five sopranos. That means we're going to use a combination. We have seven total that we're choosing from, and we're choosing five of those. We'll get that number here in a second. I want to know about the altos. We are selecting four of them from a pool of nine. Again, we're going to use a combination. We're choosing from a pool of nine a total of four altos. Let's plug this into our calculator and see what it gives us. I'm going to do it all at once. I'll do seven choose five first. I'll put that in parentheses. I'm going to multiply that by nine choose four. If we enter that, I'm getting that there are 26 
646 ways to do this. And I think we can move on to the next question. We have a new type of license plate. The first spot must be an A, a B, or a C. And the remaining five spots can be any letter or number without any repetition. Okay, so how many choices do we have for our first spot in our license plate? It looks like three. We could choose A, B, or C. As far as the next spot in our license plate, we can choose any letter or any number. Well, we have 26 letters and 10 numbers to choose from, so that is 36 total options. However, once we make that selection, we only have 35 options left for our next spot. And so on, until we fill all of our spots and we can multiply all those numbers together. And my calculator is giving me a total of 135 or 136 million options for this license plate. That is a whole lot of license plate options. Of course, they have to take out the ones with the dirty words in them. Let's move on to the next problem. We're tracking water park injuries over a total of 120 days. The number of injuries is reported in this chart. So for example, there were 16 days out of these 120 where there were three injuries recorded at the water parks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to compute probability for each one of these numbers of injuries and put it into a probability distribution. The first question is how many days did we have zero injuries? The answer is 19 and there are 120 days total. 19 divided by 120 is 0.158 approximately. Let's complete the rest of this probability distribution table doing the exact same thing. Okay, I filled out the table. We should state why this probability distribution is valid. Well, first of all, notice that all of these probabilities are numbers between 0 and 1. We have no negative numbers, and we have no numbers bigger than 1. Also notice that they add up to 1. Well, they add up to approximately 1. If we didn't do any rounding, they would add up to 1. The next thing we want to do is construct a graph for this data. Along the horizontal axis, we're putting our number of injuries in there. And along the vertical axis, we're putting the probability of having that many injuries. I'm noticing that in our table, our largest probability is 0.35. And I'm going to make a bar for each one of these probabilities. And it's going to look something like that. So that looks like a pretty good chart. So let's check out the next problem. We're going to want to find the mean of this probability distribution, the variance, and the standard deviation of this probability distribution. I'm going to go back to the original chart and do the calculations up here. As far as the mean or the expected value is concerned, we need to multiply all of our x's by our probabilities of x's. And I'm going to put that in the table right up here. If I take 0 times 0 0.158, I'm going to get 0. If I take 1 times 0.275, I get 0.275. If I take 2 times 0 0.350, I get 0.7. If I take 3 times 0 0.133, I'm rounding up to 0 0.400. And if I take 4 times 0 0.083, I'm getting 0.333. Now, what I'm doing to get those numbers exactly is I'm actually typing in a few more 3s for these probabilities because I remembered that these 3s repeated. But okay, the expected value or the mean of this probability distribution is the sum of this purple row here. So I'm going to move this over, and I think we can do the sum right here. I'm getting a mean or an expected value of 1.71, let's say. Relating this back to the original problem says that on any given day, we expect there to be, on average, 1.7 accidents at this water park. All right, the next thing we need to do is calculate the variance. I'll remind you that the equation for the variance looks like this, and it requires that we calculate x squared, and take our x squared and multiply it by each one of our p of x's. Let's do that really quickly. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. If we take each one of these x squareds and multiply it by our probability, 0 times 0 0.158 is 0, 1 times 0 0.275, 4 times 0 0.35, 9 times 0 0.1333, and 16 times 0 0.08333. And if we sum all of the values that we just found in this column here, we find this number down here. So I'm adding all of those numbers in that table up on my calculator. And I'm getting that that number is 4.208. We're going to subtract from that the number that we got for our mean squared. And I'm going to zoom up just a little bit here, and I'm going to bring up a calculator. If we take that 4.208 that we found and subtract 1.71 and square that 1.71, I'm getting that our variance is 1.28. 
So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to put it in our answer box down below. And then to find the standard deviation of that same distribution, we just need to take the square root of the variance. Bringing our calculator back up to do that, we would type second and then this square root button right here. That brings up a square root. And if we want the square root of the previous answer, I can do second and answer. I can hit enter on that. And that is going to give me the answer for my standard deviation, which is 1.133.